Hey, what's up guys? Phoenix here, and welcome to Table 500 Duels. <laughs> welcome to the wonderful world of playing just nonsensical decks that are not really, uh, not really that competitive anymore, but could potentially be competitive given the right build and given the right push. But for this video, I wanted to test um, Domain Monarchs. I wanted to see if this deck was, you know, a little bit something that could have been, you know, worked around with with the addition of Foolish Burial Goods, essentially giving you ways to graveyard your uh, pantheism of the monarchs which then allows you to search and then if you have any way to resolve your ideas grave effect you can add pantheism to your hand essentially having a way to try and search pantheism prime while you're uh, while you're trying to make your play start and like that's what foolish does and all that sort of stuff but basically Trying to play Floodgate.deck. As you can see, there's Majesty's Fiends, there's Vanity's Fiends, there's Gofus in here so that you can support the allures to have just more draw power, although this arguably might just not be correct. It might just be better as something like trade-ins and then a higher, larger monarch count, like more Erebuses. Well, not more Erebuses, uh, more cards like Erebus, like Thestalos and stuff that take cards away from your opponent turn one and then playing... Uh, Super Quantum Red Layer in place of Gofu, because Gofu really only has just a really nifty interaction with Karaz, but Super Quantum Red Layer is a unique card in that you can uh, you can constantly cycle it over and over again, and it can be Tribute Summoned, so if you open two Super Quantum Red Layers and something like Return of the Monarchs, then that actually searches for your uh, your Aether, which gets your play starting, and that's something that's uh, that Gofu doesn't give you, but Gofu is an allure target, so like, there's multiple different ways that you can build this deck, essentially, uh, but basically this deck is known far and wide as Brick Narks, and it was known that even when Pantheism and Stormforth were at 3, and Aether were at 3, but with these cards all at 1, you definitely just kind of have to grasp at straws for what you're trying to, uh, to do to make the deck operate and work, and I'm literally just trying to floodgate my opponents out, so... Uh, let's see if this deck can function against uh, against some nonsense and see what we can get from some dual videos, shall we? Let's just jump straight into the first game. Alright, so going into the first game, I believe I get to start, and at this point I do not know what my opponent is playing, but as you can see on screen, he's playing Gravekeepers. So this is, oh, the truest battle of the Table 500 decks. Oh my goodness. Because he's testing Gravekeepers because of the newest errata to Necro Valley, potentially making the deck, you know, something that could potentially be played because Necro Valley is incredibly strong, and if you can build your deck around something that supports itself with Necro Valley, that's in theory decently good. The problem is, it's not 2010 anymore. Now, Gravekeepers did get some good support in Legacy of the Valiant in 2014 with an Infernity Barrier type card, Imperial Tombs of the Necro Valley, uh, but ultimately that card requires so much stuff to happen uh, for you to even be able to resolve it in any way, shape, or form because of the fact that uh, that you have to have a Gravekeeper face up on the board and you have to have Necro Valley face up on the field. So like, overall, it just uh, it's a wonderful uh, situation that you get into where you have to have like two and three card interactions still already existing before Imperial Tombs can be used um, and stuff like that. But he's basically just got tons of Necro Valleys in his hand, and it does hurt my deck considerably. It means I can't recur my Monarchs from Grave off Erebus. It means I can't banish my Pantheism. I can't banish for Prime. I can't banish for Aether on my opponent's turn. I can't banish my Eidos to summon Idea from Grave. There's actually just a ton of things that are that are just wrong about my matchup against Gravekeepers. But so what we have is this interesting situation of these are both both very much rogue options. They're both, as we funnily enough and jokingly refer to them as Table 500 decks. We refer to them as that because these are decks you would expect to see at Table 500 of a YCS because they're not going to be doing well. At least that's the theory in uh, in the uh, in the community, but uh, but so the uh, the idea is that you're just not going to be uh, seeing these decks much. But so it's this weird situation where monarchs can't do anything in the format, but if they lose to gravekeepers, that means that they were absolutely just awful off the get go. But if gravekeepers can't beat monarchs when literally like all of the good cards in my deck are shut down. If Gravekeepers can't beat the neutered Monarch deck, then that just means that the Gravekeeper deck is even worse off than we ever thought it was. But so, as you can see, I'm bricking on like no Tribute Summons quite often, uh, but then my sixth card is like a Tribute Summonable, like the Majesty's Fiend was there. Uh, but I got lucky and I was able to resolve a uh, Foolish Burial Goods before my opponent put Necker Valley up, even though he got to go first that game. Uh, and then I got to storm forth away a Giant Hand for, uh, for Majesty's Fiend. Uh, so overall, it was... It was pretty legit and pretty cool, but 
as for as for how it stands now, I'm currently on the uh, losing end of uh, of a spectrum of plays because he's just doing the the bread and butter descendant combo, popping recruiter <laughs> to get the search for the other recruiter and popping a card every turn. Got me duelist, uh, but then he actually does an imperial tomb to Necro Valley on my uh, my idea, and that's actually pretty crippling because I was gonna try and summon my Karaz and you know draw cards, and then the march would be face up, so he would have to dedicate like two gravekeepers to being able to pop the march and then the Karaz. Uh, but overall, overall nothing uh, nothing really much is gonna be done there. But in the game three, I'm drawing Max C at one like it's my fucking job, like. This is the second game that I've opened with Max C. Now, game one I drew into it off Karaz, but I still opened with it. And now I've just generally opened with the Max C against a deck that it's literally dead against, because if I'm flipping Max C against a spy, that's not really the most worthwhile interaction there is that there uh, could be offering itself. But so I get to do Foolish Burial Goods to set up my uh, Pantheism, banish it, and then I'm able to pop idea with Karaz off of an Aether and then draw cards and get the Pantheism back and then draw more cards. And But unfortunately, I hurried through my play and I have two Return of the Monarchs in my hand and one of them I actually searched. <laughs> and the idea was I was going to activate Return of the Monarchs before I summoned my Aether. And that way I would have been able to search for Erebus and then I would have used Erebus to spin his Necro Valley on a following turn, in theory. Uh, but as it stands right now, now I'm just literally sitting back with this uh, situation of I need Tribute Fodder. <laughs> so that I can summon this Majesty's Fiend, and then if I can summon the Majesty's Fiend, then I get to search my Erebus. But, at this point, there's an Anti-Spell Fragrance, and a Necro Valley, and a Domain on the field. There's three Floodgates on the field at the same time. And unfortunately, uh, Demol here, he forgot to take Emptiness out of his deck to update it to the new format, so he's respecting that it's new format, and he's just keeping the Emptiness in his hand. Um, so I, I have to respect that. Like, I didn't know that until the replays even, like, were... I didn't even know that until the replays reviewed. He didn't even tell me about it. But he's literally just holding the emptiness because emptiness isn't legal under the format we're testing under, um, and he forgot to take it out. So while that does affect the games a bit, uh, because that could have been a different card, at the same time, uh, we're both just doing floodgate upon floodgate upon floodgate, so I don't think it really matters all that much in general. But going into the fourth game, my opponent gets to start, Demo gets to start, and he starts with a Necro Valley, set three back row, set a card, and then he flips anti-spell, so he's got Necro Valley anti-spell, so I set my domain, I set my stuff, and I opened Max C again against a deck that it's literally garbage against. Opened Max C like it was my job. This is a one of. Ah, oh, I can't believe it. But so from here, I top deck an idea, and that's just amazing. It's great. Um, and so I use the idea to get Idos. I'm surprised he didn't even like warning the idea, or that he didn't lose a turn the uh, the uh, Idos when it came out, because he has lose a turn set alongside that anti spell. Uh, so I'm surprised that didn't end up being the case, because he, he uses lose a turn now when I 1 for 1 the uh, idea out. Um, but then I use Tenacity here, getting return, which I have to set. And then I tribute someone for Majesty's Fiend and flip over my domain. And Jesus fucking Christ, there are five, five floodgates on the field. This is not the way Yu-Gi-Oh! is supposed to be played. Jesus Christ, somebody send help. Send Amber Lamps, goddamn. This is not the Yu-Gi-Oh I believe in. This is five floodgates. It's a domain, a Majesty's Fiend, a lose a turn, an anti spell, and a Necro Valley. Like what the fuck? How is this something that's <laughs> how is this something anyone can consider fair or healthy? I don't understand. And I would like to know why floodgates exist. Uh, and why they why they're able to be put on the board in such capacity by these table five hundred decks. It's literally the only way these decks win is that they just go, ooh, you can't play this, so why get to play, and I get to run away with the game. And I got to run away with that game with a Majesty's Fiend. I stormed forth over something in Majesty's Fiend, if I remember correctly. No, I one for one into Idea, and then Majesty's Fiend, and, and then he just had no out to the rest of my board. Uh, so there's that, but... Next game, Necro Valley's on the board, I summon an Idea, it gets striked, and then he gets to flip Spy, go into Descendant, and then punch me for a rather significant chunk. I mean, 37 is a, a good bit of damage when you're on a clock against Necro Valley. And then he flips over Anti-Spell. Now, I could have respected the fact that he could have drawn Anti-Spell at any point and set my Foolish and set my Foolish Burial Goods, uh, but then it could have been popped by Descendant and all that sort of nonsense, so that's not that's not the kind of L we're trying to take. But still, like, holy goddamn shit. Look at this. Like, 
floodgates. Literally, my deck is putting a domain up. His deck is putting up Necro Valley. I'm trying to tribute summon for Vanity's Fiend or Majesty's Fiend, and he's trying to flip Anti Spell. This is not the way Yu-Gi-Oh is supposed to be played. I'm so fucking triggered by this entire situation, and it honestly makes me hate life so much more than I was literally ten minutes ago. But anyway. That is such a weird, weird game set that I played, but I wanted to play some more rogue options, and apparently d wanted to test something wacky, because I didn't tell him what I was playing, and he was just like, I'm gonna bring Gravekeepers. Let's go. But so, Gravekeepers, I believe it was 3-2. I believe I ran away with three of those games against Gravekeepers. So, like, Gravekeepers, even with the new Necro Valley, with Anti-Spell in the main, with all this stuff, Necro Valley shutting down, like, half the good cards in my deck from, from their good effects the Monarch deck can still just beat it. <laughs> so it's not looking too good for our pals over there chilling out in the Necro Valley. But anyway, let me know what your thoughts are in the comments down below, guys. I would really like to know if you guys want to see more like rogue decks being played. I could literally do an entire duel series called Table 500 Duels. I would definitely probably not be, uh, not be objected to it, especially if it's something you guys want to see. Just more rogue options playing against more rogue options. But anyway... Like I already said, let me know what your thoughts are in the comments down below. But other than that, be sure to like and subscribe to see more content produced by me. Hit that little bell notification if you want to get notified when I upload so you do not miss an upload. I understand that uh, sometimes my uploads get uh, buried in people's subscription feeds or just don't show up. So that bell, if you enable notifications, will let them show up and you will get notified whenever I upload. And definitely, be sure to check out the links in the description to Facebook and my Patreon page. If you want to support me directly, then Patreon is the best way to do so, as well as it gets you access into a monthly giveaway happening at the end of this month for a box of Duelist Saga, potentially. I'm giving away a couple of boxes of Duelist Saga as a, as a little bit of a thank you to the people that have supported me the most that they could possibly support me by uh, by over by going over and contributing to the Patreon. So if you're, if you're interested, then go check out the details to that. It also gets you access to my Discord server and possible access into playing me for games and all that sort of nonsense. But other than that, if you're looking to acquire cards that I played in this video or that you saw played in this video and want to indirectly support the channel, then check out Second Chance Gaming's website, which is also linked in the description. They are a direct sponsor of me and this channel, and I'm a big fan of how they do business with what I've experienced thus far. So if you're looking to acquire anything or just to buy or sell in general, then definitely go check them out and let them know that Phoenix sent you. But other than that, that's it for this video. Thanks for watching, as usual. And take care, guys. I will see you in the next video. Holy shit, floodgates everywhere.